What's good, everybody? It's your boys, Travi, Kane, and TJ. We are here with the TKT Podcast, the Two Kill Time Podcast, the podcast, podcast, Ooh. podcast y'all love so much. Uh, before we get into the episode, I do want to say thank you for our listeners for the continued love and support, as we always do. Uh, guys, how was your week? How was uh, the week of whatever day through uh, March 7th? I, um, it's been a blur my past couple weeks here. Um, I've been doing a lot of shit <clears throat> to get a lot of other shit in. For sure. So I've just kind of been fucking all over the place, but... Um, been playing ball a lot, which has been nice. But Good. Overall, stressed, tired. That's pretty much it. Feel that, man. To sum it up, TJ's doing shit to get shit done. Simple. <laughs> Simple. Word. Oh, it's good. Partially working. Me and TJ are on a six-day streak of going to play ball. Damn. So that no five five today, right? Six will be tomorrow. tomorrow. So that's good. Uh, got my car tinted a couple of days ago, so. There you go. You know, yeah. It was, it's been a decent week, but. Yeah, I was stressful fortunate at the same that, time. That my car was tinted when I bought it this time. Thank God. Didn't have to pay was for it. Was it? Yeah, it had the ceramic tint on it, I think. Um, at least nice. that's what I was told. I don't know how true that is, but that's besides the point. Right, 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 right. How was your week, man? I mean. It was all right, man. I I didn't have a day off until Sunday. I worked an 11-day stretch. Was fucking beat, man. And I finally had Sunday off. Worked Monday. Fuck. Had today off. And, like, obviously, like, if you know anything about the car business, it comes in waves, man. Like, some, some weeks you're really hot. Some weeks you're really not. Like, and that that's all the way from the top to the bottom. Like, if you're the best of the best, if you're the worst of the worst. And I had a really good February, which is, like, decent you know what i mean like that never usually happens february is usually typically a rough month and then march is usually booming and i was heading into the first of the month and i was like i'm about to have fucking a hat trick day one like i'm about to sell three cars and like went home was like fuck yeah i got three out one guy backed out and the other guy just straight up ghosted me so yeah i got one car out so far this month and it's been kind of rough but hey that's all right. Man, you know, one's we, better than none, bro. Yeah, we roll on. You know, it's not as bad as some people uh, right now out there. So uh, it's just been super stressful, man, like all the time. Like like I said, 11 days in a row for not really much to show for it. It really just sucked. Granted, like that was leading into last month as well, so it's a little bit different, but just fucking tiring. So what's the deal with 11 days in a row? Someone so like, called out? So, so the last... Sick. Last we're open the last two Sundays of the month, so my team has to work the first Sunday. The other team has to work the second Sunday. But if you're not pacing, you have to work both. So like I was pacing, but I went in anyways. And then you have to work your last day off the month, and you have to work the last day of the month. So my last day off would have been Tuesday, and it was in coincidentally the last day of the month. So I worked. Uh, it was like so it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then just had Sunday off work. Monday had Tuesday. Yeah. Fuck. It was Dear fucking, fucking rough. Lord. Yeah, it was rough. Fuck. And like, so, so the reason why I was telling you whole like sob story about how I haven't sold anything is like today was my day off, like my first real day off where I just didn't have to do anything. And I've had customers texting and calling me all day, but like not customers that are going to buy a car, customers that have already bought a car and like just shit like I needed to get one a ball ball for a truck like things like that and not that i'm not helping them i don't i love it it's just like damn you know like the one day like i got yeah and and you get like internet leads and stuff i won't get a lead while i'm at work today my day off i've gotten four fucking internet leads like on customers and it's just like holy fuck <laughs> i just want to relax just wanted a day to do nothing jesus man yeah sorry for my little fucking Boohoo sob story there to start the podcast. I apologize. Boohoo sob story. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so so we had a couple things we want to talk about. Speaking of tint early in this episode, uh, you had a question about window tint. Kind of a question about it, but just like your guys' views on it. So I just got mine done, and at first I was a little bit skeptical. You know, I've heard... Some people get pulled over. Some say the cops don't care about it. 
And my question to you guys is, why do you think it's illegal and should it be illegal? I don't think that it, it, it depends, man. Like, obviously, like, there's, there's a line. Like, there's a the, limit. You know what I mean? Like, if you're driving around with 5% on your windows and fucking 50 on your windshields, like, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Like, just in terms of safety. Safety. But, I mean, if, you, if you're yeah. driving around with fucking 45, 50 on your windows and, and you do a sunscreen, like, type shade where you do a certain, let, let's say, 25% or tw- 10% on your windshield and, and your rear window, then I don't care, man. Like, fuck it. Like, yeah, I right. don't want people seeing me in my car. Like, that's my space. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm I'm for it there, but again, I do understand why there's limits. Do I think the limits need to be raised a little bit? Yeah, but um, yeah. Before I kind of get into where I want to segue into that conversation as well, TJ, I'm going to let you give your answer because I have another thing to kind of piggyback off of that as well. Yeah, no, I definitely think, like you said, safety purpose. I could see why there's limits on it. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause like it makes sense. Cause like if you're riding, yeah, dude. If you're riding around pitch black, second at, at it, night, little, like you can't even see your second, fucking reverse yeah, lights and shit. shit. Like, yeah, like you got to roll down your windows to see. That's yeah. when you know it's too dark. Yeah. So real quick before you can, uh, so I got mine done. I got my back to. Side windows are five percent. My front two are see, 20. but like on the back, I don't think it should matter. Like the back right. two, like rear doors, shouldn't matter yeah. because that, and you all. got a kid. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that shit shouldn't matter. Just ain't nobody yeah. need to see out of those for fucking safety. Right, and so my my front two sides are twenty, which is definitely better. Like you can, it's doable. Yeah, and then I got a sun strip that's five two. J. I'll be driving sometimes. I'm like, imagine like, because obviously you see some cars that are blacked out. They have five percent all yeah. of you know every single window, and it's like, like you guys said, it is a safety hazard, bro. Like it's like, fucking dark. Like you open your door and you're like, holy fuck, it's daytime. I didn't even realize. <laughs> like we get cars yes. in on our lot all the time that are like that. My buddy tints his windows all the time, and I think I think he did his windshield was so it's. It, if, yeah, so it's five percent is obviously like kind of the darkest legal that yeah. legal that they'll do, but he I think he does fifty or seventy five on his windshield, and to me like that's like perfect. You know what I mean? Like it's right. it's not too dark, yeah. it's not too light. It, you don't have to wear fucking sunglasses when you're driving. It it's it's a normal. I can't remember what he got, but it, to me it feels fine. And then the windows I think were twenty five all the way around, and then his rear I think he did. Uh, fit. It was like fifty or like twenty five or something like that. It's pretty dark on yeah. the back, but again, I don't see why that's an issue. Like if you're if you're talking five right. percent, that's a problem. But the where I wanted to to kind of go with this as well is in New York, in a lot of states, it's illegal to have your truck lifted over a certain height. Obviously, they don't fucking go out measuring every lifted truck. But if you're out there being a dick, they're gonna do that. Um, and you granted, again, it, it comes, it comes down <laughs> yeah, to safety. It comes was... down to fucking like your ride height being a visibility and shit. But like, let's be real. I, I don't ever hear of anybody getting a ticket for fucking a lift on their truck. You know, right. ever hear of someone? It's illegal in New York State to start your car and not be present either next to or in your car in New York State to let it warm up. I did not know that. Yes. Yeah. You. You. Wait. Te- wait. Wait. What? So if you're in your house and you remote start your car, you're technically supposed to be in your car while it warms up or near your car. You can't just be in your house letting it run because of emission laws in New York State. But you don't see, like, police officers just pulling up and fucking yeah, like <laughs> giving what? you a ticket on your property. Yeah, like, that ain't a thing. Maybe it's not illegal anymore. I know it was because it used to be blasted all over the radio. Like, hey, make sure you don't fucking do this because it actually is against the fucking law. But nobody gives tickets for it. Yeah, yeah. That's... like that. Can you imagine a cop knocking on your door? They're like, "Hey, um, make sure you shut your I car saw your off." Your car was sorry. Your car was running. I'm gonna I'm, checked in. I'm, I'm looking. You're at like, somewhere. dude, it's negative ten out. I'm getting ready for work. my car isn't fucking from 1996. It needs half. Yeah. So, 
I need to go out that bitch. Warm up. Yeah, that's no. That's Let's fucking see. whack. I didn't even know that. I'm I'm trying to find <laughs> it right now. Uh see if it's still a law. I don't care how late I am though. I'm waiting till the RPMs drop under a thousand to leave. Yes. <laughs> I'm waiting. Like oops. I'm trying I to get my car right the full twenty, bro. So the un- twenty unintended minutes? motor vehicle law specifically states no person driving or in charge of a motor vehicle shall permit it to stand unattended without first stopping the engine, locking the ignition, removing the key from the vehicle, and effectively setting the brake thereon, and when standing upon any grade, turning the front wheels. Uh, however, the provision for removing the key from the vehicle shall not require the removal of keys hidden from sight. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what? if I can find anything else. The uh, Let's see... So are there any exceptions? Yes, a couple, actually. First of those are residents who have remote control start. You're fine because the key is technically in the is not technically in the ignition. But so you can't go out there and start your car. So if you have remote start, you're fine. But you can't go Fuck. out there and physically start your car, it says. Son of a bitch. If you start your car and warm it up, but only go right outside the car to clear off the snow. You also are fine due to the fact that your car isn't unattended. So you have to be near your car. You can't be inside. I can't. I. It doesn't say anything about like fines or anything like that. But uh, here's another one. You can't wear slippers after 10 p.m. while driving. Uh, you can't sell dog or cat. This is this <laughs> Wait, is what? This is specifically New York. <laughs> no selling dog or cat hair. Uh, no tossing a ball at someone's head just for fun. Can we go back to the slippers thing? Because, like... It says no wearing slippers what? after 10 p.m. I don't know if that's, like, a out in public like or, like, driving. driving? It just says this is a weird law in New York Who State. The fuck? All right, so I have Ugg boots. I would assume, they, like, slipper. They're not boots. They're, like, a slipper-type boot. It's technically that's... illegal in New York State for men. Men cannot wear a jacket without matching pants. And That's not a slipper. Those... Hundred per- these are like eighty five percent slipper, bro. I wouldn't say it's a slipper, dude. It's it's pretty much like a boot. I think I wear them outside all the time. I mean, all I can think of right now is the ranch on Netflix, it. like with UGG boots and shit. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So men cannot wear a jacket without matching pants. Uh, no peeing on pigeons in the park. Women cannot wear body hugging clothing on the street. These are technically all laws according to the site in New York State. Uh, let's see. No speaking in elevators. No puppet shows in your window. No putting. I fuck with the no I speaking knew, in I elevators. Knew, I knew this one. No putting an ice cream cone in your back pocket on a Sunday. I remember that distinctively from high school because uh, Miss Woodruff. That's had, a law. Had put that on the board in eighth grade uh, algebra. Yeah, it was like a whole How? thing. How would you put an ice cream cone in your back pocket? Who the fuck decided we're going to make this a real we're law? Take the time. Like, this is what we're doing today. <laughs> and someone was like, yep, let's do it. And in, in, New, in New York City, a license must be purchased before hanging clothes on a clothesline. A person is not allowed. Yeah, that's the ice cream one. And a $25 fine will be levied for flirting. That that's New York State law, LongIsland.com. Oh my god, that's fucking awesome! I don't even want to know like what weird laws Tennessee has because that shit's probably wild. That is fucking. Can't even imagine. Yeah. Like, at that point, what are we even talking about? Like, what <laughs> like, had to what happen do- for someone to be like, you know what? Get it, get it to legislation. No ice cream cones in back pots, pockets, How but big only of a problem. on Sundays. How big of a problem, yo? Like the I mean, churchgoers can't be putting their ice cream in the back pocket. We're talking definitively, like precisely. No ice cream cones in the back pocket How on Sunday. How would you do it? Would you can put I the just cone have, in can your I pocket? Can I just have a, a scoop? Can I take a scoop and just on a Sunday, or does a it have pocket, to be a cone? Front pocket's cool. What are the loopholes? What, about? <laughs> what are the loopholes? How can I get around this? Because you put I conveniently do this every Sunday. In- okay, first. I mean, you have to You think? You would have to, yeah, yeah unless you want to ruin your pants. 
I feel like the pants are fucked either way. Yeah, but do you want them more fucked or less fucked? Why is it it's not going to matter? An ice cream cone in your pocket. Here we go. I need that. Oh, apparently that's also illegal in Tennessee. The ice cream cone <laughs> thing. Do you guys want to commit? It's a uh, it's illegal in crime. Alabama as well. Put an ice cream cone and everyone does it. See, bro, I don't want to do where it. My this brain is goes like is a like thing I... in a lot of states. It's also illegal in Kentucky. Did someone do it and then someone saw it and was like, we need to make that what illegal? What trend happened? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. on. This is from a bachelor's in psychology and Japanese language from the University of Kentucky. Uh, it is a very old, weird-sounding law that several states, especially in the South, uh, that just haven't disappeared. What happened was people used to steal horses that way. They would put the ice cream in their back pocket and get close to the horses. The horses love sugar and followed the sneaky thief away. Is it applicable today? Not at all, but it just hasn't been taken off the books. Does that mean you're going to get arrested for it? No. Will you be judged as a nutcase? Yes. So it was due to all the horse racing and like stealing horses back when that was like the mode of travel. The fact that that law has a legitimate backstory is yeah. wild. <laughs> that is fucking but phenomenal. Like, like that's the best excl- explanation we but could like, have. But like, why is? I mean, I, I guess was race day it Sundays. Out. Was race day Sundays or something like that? Like, why is Probably, that a bro? Sunday? Yeah, because yeah, it's specifically they went from horse Sundays. racing to football. Horse racing to football. I mean, who who wouldn't? Um, who who wouldn't go horse racing to football? Let's be real. Sounds like a sounds like a fire ass day. Yeah, let's fucking yeah. Leaving the track, going to watch a bunch of grown men tackle each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. I I like how we went from window tin to the ice cream thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that was. What are oh the my questions? god! I forgot this whole shit started with window yeah. tin. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we talked about uh, in the last pod that Travi was on, so episode 27, uh, was AirPods versus AirPod Pros, um, oh, which is just kind of kind of the general question here because I also have follow-ups for this question. Um, to me, I don't like the rubber ones, like the one with the rubber end. So the AirPod Pros are like any of those. I'm not a big fan. You want to make your case before I pop off or... Yeah, before you pop off, I will make my case. Yeah, go ahead. Are you why? I per- I personally, and I'm I'm choosing my words carefully here. Personally, I like the rubber ones more. I think they're more comfortable in my ear. I think the straight plastic AirPods like almost scratches my even, ear in a even sense. Even like the new ones that are like weirdly shaped. Because like I, I, think I've been I have like those the, ones. The, the one of the first generations, which are like the normal shape. Now the new one's existed. like angled down, so like instead of it just being like a circle, and then and so then the ones down, he's talking about are like literally angled. these, but they're not the rubber. Yeah, they're yours and mine combined. Yeah, so they're like angled down, like the That'd be great. the pro exactly. I think those are perfect. That's, that's perfect. Like if I'm looking for so, an in-ear Bluetooth headphone, that is what I want. TJ, I suppose you can take the reins now. All right, fantastic. So we've been sitting here recording this podcast, right? I don't know. I don't know how long now. Probably like 25. I have put this fucking AirPod into my ear. It's almost fallen out. I've kept track because I knew this was a topic that was coming up. 11 fucking times, bro. I'm just sitting here moving around casually. Just casually moving my head and it's almost fallen out. They have the widest fucking ear canals, <laughs> yeah. Like on the planet, I don't think I have like small ear holes. Go ahead, but like my buddy, so my Maybe buddy I Martin, do. my buddy Martin, he just bought the ones that like they're not like normal headphones. They sit like right here. They sit in front, and they don't actually. There's not a speaker on them. It's like vibrations. It vibrates your fucking bones for you to hear oh, it. So no. like, it's, I wouldn't like that. It, it's not like a really hard abrasive. vibration. I can't. I can't explain it. I'm not the fucking scientist of the friend group sure. here, um, but it's like something to do with like conduction and shit. And like it's it, it is a speaker. I lied when I said it wasn't a speaker, but it's not like an, an AirPod where you have that little hole and it just goes directly into your ear and that's where you're hearing it from. It like fucking vibrates right here, and even though there's nothing in your ear. 
There's nothing in your ear. You can't like hear anybody talking. Like you still have to pause the music or like if you're on a phone, you won't hear the the outgoing fucking noise and shit. It's wild. But it's because he has really small ear canals and he he can't use in ear AirPods or ear earbuds for an extended amount of time because they hurt his ears. Like he's like 30, 45 minutes max and he has to take them out. See, for me, the the original AirPods, like they do what TJ is saying mine do, and that's why I like the rock because it secures mine, so I might just have like, yeah. a wider business than you going on. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I just want to say, Travis, on the record, said he had a wider business. <laughs> Anywho, th- dude, it's just fucking, I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is about these, but like, because they're so wide, it like naturally pushes itself out of my fucking ear. So, so let me ask you this: Would you be more comfortable with like an over ear headphones? Like, I always use just my headset when we I've do never, but like, I. I've had this headset for fucking like five years and and I know I need a new one. The cushion's not comfortable anymore, but I almost don't want to get another over the head, like over the ear headphone headset anymore. I want to just go to like a Bluetooth, like AirPod yeah. thing and just plug it into the back of my computer and run it. And the only time I ever wear like a over the head headset would be like when we're playing games. Yeah. Like I would never, I would never buy an over the head headset to like listen to music yeah like outside of me being on my computer like listening to or making music or like gaming or doing the podcast i don't ever have my headset on like if but i'm there's amazing fucking headphones yeah that are over this that are over like head ridiculously headphones. expensive yeah yeah but they are fucking incredible yeah headphones. yeah do you guys like yeah. wired headphones like wired headphones versus bluetooth I haven't used wired in so long. Yeah. So, but I'm not like against it. I'm not against it, but I, I bought Bluetooth just for like the convenience of not like having to be restricted. I feel that. And I mean, besides my car, man, like I'm because I'm working or playing basketball. Like I don't need extra business. Speaking of that, man, like, the, I, I've seen multiple people, like multiple people that I know, friends of, speak on or post on social media being like, hey, man, what's the best in-ear headphone? AirPods don't work for me. I have really sweaty ears. Like work, working out in-ear headphones. Yeah. Okay. How the fuck much are your ears Yo. sweating, bro? Yo, as someone, I have overactive sweat glands, so I sweat like a mother fucking pig man whenever i do anything so i get that because dude the like the first gen airpods the ones that i use all yeah. the time, i do start sweating they're like all plastic so they just like literally will, like, i never have that out. issue with mine like every time i go to the gym i have mine never i mean i mean dude am i, I like dripping in sweat no but i mean even when i would go go play basketball when if I go to Top Golf, like they stay in my ear, like I never have an issue with it. No, I that literally has only happened to me one time. The rest of them, yeah, I've dude, I've loved the first ones. The first ones stay in my ears no matter what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, so, but, but yeah, I don't like these rubber. I can't get behind them, man. They, they for apparently they just, I got to try these new ones that are a combo. Yeah. It's not necessarily that they're a combo. They just had like the same shape as those ones, except for they just they're, they're plastic. Just plastic. Yeah, like they don't yeah. like go down to That'd the little money. nub and then you put the plastic like little rubber piece on. It's literally that. Oh, that'd be money. Yeah, yeah, that'd be perfect for me. That's what I'm saying. Might dude. have to, might have to move on. Yeah, get the new pros. To that. But uh, yep, they actually had them when we were at Walmart. So I should not right next to the. Oh, I thought Walmart. those were. Honestly, like if you didn't yeah. know, like I would, I would assume they were the same. You know what I mean? Like if you're I not know, really looking like, at really them and look. be like, "Oh wait, yeah, yeah for sure." Yeah. Uh, the next kind of conversation I've been wanting to talk about this for two weeks. Uh, we saved this because Travi missed out last week, and it's uh, in a, in a one v one battle. Okay, I know we do this all the time on this podcast, and this is one I it, it was it was trending oddly we enough this shit. on Call of Duty Twitter. Okay, it was it was Call of Duty Twitter. For some reason, was going at it. Whether who was going to win, a moose or an alligator. 
And I think like that is probably a pay per view matchup. Like that that would <laughs> fill AT and T Stadium. Oh, easily. I think I'd buy that pay per view. Yeah, I'd pay for it. What's the yeah, undercard? Yeah. Like squirrel versus rat? Fucking <laughs> bear versus mountain lion? What's the prelims here? Dog yeah. versus cat <laughs> is the is the secondary main event? Yeah. No, yeah, I don't know. Where'd you get? I don't even know, dude. I, I think, like, it, it's a toss up. Like, money lines minus 100 for both, like, minus 110 for both. It's tight. That's how, yeah. I, think I it's don't a know, match. dude. A moose and an alligator? Yeah. I think I'd have to go the alligator, bro. I was thinking the same. See, I. Off rip. Like, I was Were like, you thinking oh, moose? it's a fucking moose. And then I, like, sat back and thought about it for a good while, and I'm like, well, it's got to be the it's alligator, man. It's alligator. <laughs> like, it's yeah, got to be like, the alligator, because, I mean, a moose is giant, bro, huge. Like, it could step on the alligator, but what's that going to do to the alligator, bro? Yeah, like, he's got... Like, they're well, similar. I, the I, I don't know how much an alligator weighs. Let's say an alligator weighs 400 pounds. I have no fucking clue. That fucker could I weigh four did. tons. I don't know. Dude, like, but a moose like eight, is like 2,000 pounds, but like the alligator's got armor and shit. It's got the yeah. scales. Like, it's probably good. They're fast. Moose are fast, too. Moose have the antlers, but crocodiles are low to the ground. It's going to be hard to utilize the antlers. Well, TJ made a good point. Are we point, saying bro. alligator or crocodile? Because one of them is way more fucking fierce than the other. I don't one. know the difference, so. One of them is, and I can't, I want to say crocodile. Saying? One of them's like way more aggressive, like bout that action. I think it's the alligator, bro. It might, What's it's one of the two. I don't alligator know. Alligator or crocodile. Uh, typically, crocodiles two. are more aggressive than alligators, which, which makes crocodiles more dangerous. Alligators gotcha. are opportunistic feeders, meaning that they're not likely to chase you down unless they're provoked. Okay, so let's change this up. Crocodile, then. Sorry. I apologize. Apparently, okay. I, I, this, I, no, I was no. just going off yeah. of what was on Twitter. I, I send my condolences. I just remember hearing that, so I just want to... But, dude, I still... Yeah, I'm still taking the croc. Yeah, crocky. Yeah. Taking the croc. <laughs> I'm taking the croc. Yeah, Crocodile dude, versus like... moose. Okay. Like TJ said, man, if he gets a hold of the leg of the moose, like the bigger they are, the harder. Like, I think it once would the moose is on its straight side, straight up be... rip the leg off. So again, the antlers, bro, it'll, it's it's the gonna be hard. Death roll that thing, it's, bro. It would be hard to death roll just because it's so big. But I'm saying, it's like, huge grabs yeah. the leg, like knee or below, or even at the knee or up. I guess it doesn't matter, and just like rips it. Moose is coming down, but. The no. antlers on a moose, like, it's going to be hard for that moose to utilize the antlers because yeah, even if is. you flip the alligator, it can get Low back over. Of gravity. Like, yeah. I mean, the only, I think the only course of attack that a moose has on an alligator or a crocodile is stepping on it. It's got to hit him with, like, an elbow drop. Fucking <laughs> <Full, laughs> <just, full laughs> fucking Hulk down. Hogan leg drop. So but, my next question is, is it a first-round knockout? No. Round th- round three decision? I think it would be a second round TKO by the Gator. I'd, I'd probably take Sorry. three. I'd probably take three. I think it's going three. Three? Yeah, three in an eight-round like, fight. It's not a cakewalk. I'm not saying it's a cakewalk. But, because, I mean, again, like that, even though the moose is big, two. moose are fast, but so are crocodiles. But the only attack the crocodile really has is to bite it. Whereas the moose, the only attack it really has is to step on it and use its antlers. And, and at that point, I'd anything, take the bite. Yeah, and anything that's vital on the moose, the alligator's not going to be able to get to. Like, it's going to uh, have to take it down. down. Yeah. Full-blown grappler versus boxer here. Yeah. We're, we're talking MMA versus fucking boxing. Like, <laughs> UFC versus the National Boxing Federation. I'm taking UFC every time. Me too. Dude, 14. Like, you put him in an octagon, it's over. You put him in the octa clips. <laughs> clips. I just thought it was really interesting. One, because it was trending on Call of Duty side of Twitter. I feel like sorry, not to You're cut good. you off, You're but good. I feel like the fight depends on where it's at. What do you mean? 
Like, are we saying they're in an actual fucking octagon, like, or are they like in woods? What if? Uh, so, so let's let's take in like the water. Or? <laughs> in the, we're we're going like one. So there's two fights, okay? There there's okay. gonna be one in the swamp, one in the forest. I think it's two o croik. Yeah, I I agree. I'm still taking crocodile. Yeah. I think you put him in an octagon. You put him in a boxing ring. You put him in a WWE <laughs> match. A table's la- put him in a table ladder scene. chairs match, and the crocodile is winning. You put him in the Money in the Bank, Hell in the Cell. Look like prime <laughs> Jeff Hardy. <laughs> he's coming off the it. top. <laughs> yeah, he's Aliens winning, are dude. coming down. I'm taking the meme. croc. No death doubt. Death beam is pointed at the earth. The death beam is pointed at the earth. I'm taking Andre Iguodala. Andre Iguodala. <laughs> So one of the hottest takes like ever made, ever. Not <laughs> bro. I like. I don't want to get too off topic, but I like checked out like why he said that. Bro, Iggy hit so many clutch shots this season; it was ridiculous. Yeah, I but can't threes? remember the stats on it. I know, bro. Like it's still fucking like not Steph a Curry. three. <laughs> if if we're talking like mid range, like you just have a couple seconds, whatever. But he was specifically talking about a three point shot. Bro, it wasn't even the hot take it, that got me. It was the confidence behind it. Like, Iguodala. And he's sitting there like, yeah, Martian's this- laser beam pointed at the earth. I'm taking Iguodala. Like, he he was OD about it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, do that. I miss him on first take. I don't. Really? I hate him. Yo, did you guys see, oh. like, the recent stuff that just happened, like, on first take? Like, Kendrick Perkins With J.J. Reddick? Yeah, like, some yes. shit just went yeah. down. I didn't see, like, the whole no, thing. I guess, so there's been yeah, something bro. brewing over the past couple episodes, like, where yeah, they've been so taking JJ, shots, and then today something happened, or yesterday. Yeah, J.J. and Perk were kind of going back and forth the past couple times on first take, and then today, Kendrick Perkins basically suggested that... Um, Jokic is only winning MVP and he's only in first for a, a three peat for MVP because he basically, I don't know what the he was basically saying, like, was, whites are voting for the whites, is what he was yes. saying. Yes. Yeah. And he's it's basically like, saying bro's the averaging a triple racist. double. Like, let's and he's be real. First in the West, bro. Like, he has, he has, what are it you was last time I looked, about? That's, he had 24. That's what JJ snapped about him. He was like, like, I'm sick of these false narratives that, like, aren't really fucking there. Yeah, he's like, yeah, bro. He popped off him. the The last time I looked, Jokic had twenty four triple doubles this season. The East had a total of seventeen. Like the entire Eastern Conference had seventeen. Speaking of Jokic and triple doubles, uh, the Nuggets have never lost in like a year and a half or season and a half. And Jokic puts up a triple. I mean, I yeah. saw it like two yeah. days ago. They're like thirty nine and nothing or some crazy shit. Dude, like I I saw Kendrick Perkins say something. Jokic's like stat padding, but it's like they're no, fucking that's what winning. he does yeah, for that like they're team. They're winning. Yeah, like what? They're winning. Like <laughs> he has to put up that. They've made the playoffs the last two years because of him. Like I don't know. I like the Nuggets. I like Jokic. I I don't think there's any way he doesn't win MVP. It'll be the first time since Larry Bird, I think, that somebody's went back to back. I back. have a I have a low key hot take though about the Nuggets is like. Every fucking, like, can they do something, bro? Like, every year they're, like, top five. And, and then, then they just get the fucking smacked in the yeah. playoffs. Like, top yeah. five in the league. Not even they're, like, the, the Yeah, like, yeah, not the, the West. We're talking, like, the entire NBA. Yeah. They're a top five yeah. playing team. That's what I feel like. And then like they lose first or second Suns, round. It's like, I feel like even after getting KD, and I think Good the Suns are a fucking powerhouse. Don't get me wrong. I think they are. Fuck them. I just. I right. feel like it's going to be the That's same right. thing. Look at their record now. Like, yeah, you add KD, but to me, you add KD and you're taking away from players on that team because I don't know if they've lost since they got KD. I don't know. I don't know. I oh yeah no no I was gonna say they lost to the Mavs. Remember just like a two foot floater to lose. Yeah. This oh, fucking yeah, AirPod, yeah. dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> speaking speaking of the NBA, <laughs> like John Rant had a lot of stuff going on and. I mean, I don't want to feed off yeah. anybody's downfall and shit. And I mean, I don't know what's going on through his head, but I mean, obviously, prayers his way. I hope he makes a couple better decisions in the future. But I, I thought that was fucking wild. I mean, that's all like as of recent. But I guess the original yeah, story, like with his, 
with with, with whatever happened with the seventeen year old was I guess a year or so ago, and then he only got suspended two games, and it was after he showed a gun on his Instagram live. And I feel like there yeah. just should have been a, a better course of action there. Um, not that That's I been think like a like, weird narrative. Have you seen that? Like Shane Ja was like. Like trying, acting all tough. Yeah, like trying to be. Yeah, like Shane Sharp guess. tried to fight the whole fucking Grizzlies team after John yeah, Moran like, did was, some shit, and now everybody's elite, talking shit. Bro. And, and that's what that's Shane. what I mean. Like I, I'm not trying to feed off his downfall or anything because I, I think Jaw's a really good player. I think he's one of the best players and points in the NBA. I love Ja. Yeah, like he's probably one of my favorite yeah. players in the league. So I'm not by any means trying to prey on his downfall or feed off of his downfall for clicks, views, or anything like that because it's not what it is. I just think it, it it sucks because I think he's got this shit going on, and then like Joe Mixon today, I don't know if y'all saw that shit. That so, is that fucking, real? I wasn't. I'm pretty sure, dude. It's that. all I'm over. Like, like it's all what over. Happened? You uh, haven't seen it? There was like shots fired outside of Joe Mixon's home, and like a bunch of police uh, were there, and it was like I I. Don't hold me to this. This is allegedly speaking. Alleg- allegedly. I don't, I don't know how much of this is true or anything like that, but they're saying that Joe Mixon had shot someone shot else, like injured a, someone, injured a child a or kid, injured a bro. kid. Yeah. Um, again, not praying on Apparently. anybody's downfall. Hope it's I, not I true. Not. But Yeah. I mean, Damn. just telling you what I've heard. But, again, it just comes down to how 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 are you going to do that? Like, you got it, you got it made, man. Like you just gotta keep your head, head, head on your shoulder. Yeah, obviously, and I I can't remember who said it. I read the I story and the, the quotes today. Like these kids, especially kids like Ja, like they're learning to to deal with fame. They're they're learning to deal with that. So I'm dude, sure it's hard. They're like sure, twenty. Exactly. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that goes into that mentally, and I'm I'm just praying for him, man. I I I hope he's doing all right. Yeah. Like I hope Honestly, everything works yeah. out and um. You know what I mean? That's not just because he's a professional athlete or I like him as a player. That's because he's a person, man. Like you don't you don't want to see anybody's downfall like that. You don't you don't want to see anybody fuck up their life in that way. Right. Um but kind of also segueing from that right into the NFL uh with the Joe Mixon thing. Uh Daniel Jones signs a fucking massive contract today. Massive. 4 years, Holy 160 fuck. million, 40 million a year with incentives like 85 what guaranteed. the fuck? 80 fucking 5 mil guaranteed. They, they cut him tomorrow. Started... He's getting 85 mil. Yeah. For a guy yeah. that had less touchdowns last year than Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson was getting clowned all season. Yeah. Let me Go that. ahead, Giants. Yeah, let me see this. Yeah, local Giants fan uh, steps to the stand. So The floor is yours. Dude, Lights I've been telling... You. <laughs> Lights are on. I've been telling TJ, this man, like whoever I'm talking to, the, the route you take here is you sign Barkley. You give him the money he deserves. Franchise tag Jones. Say, hey, here's your yes. year. Fucking prove it. Yep, you got us to the playoffs. It was under a new fucking coach. Go out there. Like, me and Matt have talked about this countless times, bro. Go give him a one year deal. Give him the fucking forty million. One year, forty million. If you don't get us to the playoffs, a playoff win, thirty fucking touchdowns or twenty five touchdowns, five to ten rushing really? touchdowns, three thousand passing yards, and a two to one interception touchdown interception ratio. See you later. Like you, yeah. you just proved you're not worth it. Like to me, that's worth forty million. Lamar Jackson yeah. worth forty million. Like the only thing that's tough with that is the Giants not having receivers, and I, I mean it is Jones' fault. Like he doesn't throw touchdowns, but we've just had our first good year. Yeah, like this and now past we're just season. gonna load so it into a quarterback and have no chance of fucking building it. The right. Other, the other tough part is you guys haven't had a solid like number one receiver. Yeah, like obviously you need targets. Since, like, so why wouldn't he be like, hey? Let me take a step back. Let, Let me, me sign a, a few full, less a four year eighty, all guaranteed. You know and what I mean? And they can stack up the receivers. And we can get know, two receivers, that's, a tight end, and sign Barkley. That's yeah. the, that's the shit that pisses me off. And I'm 
as a Giants fan, as a Knicks fan, I get so annoyed with this management because, like, you have one good year as a team, like, new management, new players, all of this, new schemes, everything. You got a full change, and things go pretty well. And then all of a sudden, like, these these dumb moves just happen. And I've actually, I've been a Jones from day one. Yeah. I think he's worth money. He's not worth that money. No. So, it, it, I don't know. It, it really does suck, bro. Because it's like, so now you're going to, Saquon Barkley, top three running back in the Like, came back you, after injury for the past two years and just fucking shells. Like, shits on kids. Yeah. That was my only thought on why the Giants didn't um, hmm. pay Barkley. Is because of just literally the yeah, past longevity, three I get years it. have but been again, but you're, littered so with the the injuries, argument which sucks. And the argument with that, like I I completely understand. Yeah, he 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 doesn't have the durability. They're worried about that. But yet you give Daniel Jones, a guy who hasn't thrown over twenty touchdowns in a season before, yeah, he had forty million a year for four years with eighty five guaranteed. But you Patrick don't. Patrick Mahomes give, is making thirty one. But you don't give Barkley, a guy who has proven, hey, when I'm healthy, I can fucking run the ball, anything. Yeah. You, you franchise tag, which, again, I get. Like, that's the reason why the franchise tag's there. I understand. But you think that guy wants to stay in New York now? Like, you, you that obviously he's running through his head. Like, man, they're not willing to pay me. And if the argument is, hey, well, you haven't been healthy, let's make sure you stay healthy another year, and then we'll give you a contract. Give him a two- or three-year contract. With a fucking it, let's let's say it's for forty million total over two years, and you guarantee him twenty, so you can cut him after a year. You're paying him eighteen on a franchise tag. I'm pretty sure it's eighteen. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Franchise and tag. So running back amount. My other problem with this, bro, is running back is ten sick. mil. So give him a twenty over two years and fucking roll on. So he's getting ten mil right now. He he's guaranteed ten million ninety one thousand. That's for a running back. A tight end is eleven million three hundred forty five thousand. Kicker punter is five million three hundred ninety three. That's directly from NBC Sports. Are you able to find a quarterback? Uh yeah, hold on. I imagine quarterback is probably twenty. Because before I say this, tag. Uh, quarterback thirty two million four hundred sixteen thousand. So, worth, so more, all right. worth more than half the league's quarterbacks is a franchise tag. So so this is where that just pissed me off even more. Barkley's asking for $16 million a year. We were offering him 12 to 13 and it wasn't. So let's go sign Jones to $40 million when you could have franchise tagged him for eight and give Barkley the other three. The The problem is the, the only issue, and I – and I'm assuming that's what that is with this, is because if you sign Barkley for 16, 18, or whatever the fuck he wanted, and then franchise tag Jones, you still have to have that negotiation with Jones. And if, yes, if he franchise tag him for, for 32, yeah, you're picking up only 6 million, but now you're talking a four or five year deal still. Saquon, they probably could have gotten away with a two year deal for 16 and still been fine to sign Jones to a fucking 35, $36 million deal. Right. Because everything I saw was he wanted more than 40. And again, to me, okay, here's your one year, $40 million deal. I'm going to franchise tag you one year, 32 mil. This is what you need if you want this money. If you don't meet these requirements, but you meet these ones, we'll give you 35. If you don't meet these, we'll give you 32. Like, dude, it's insane. How are their quarterbacks out there? Patrick Mahomes, a fucking two-time MVP winner, a two-time Super Bowl winner, a two-time Super Bowl MVP winner. I think I think he won both MVPs in the Super Bowl. Could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Kelsey might have won the other one. Yeah. But let's like let's talk about that. How is he making less than a franchise tag? How the fuck does Daniel Jones honestly? <laughs> I like I get you want that amount, but how do you think you're worth that amount? That and like, dude, why aren't you being a team player? Like, you need receivers. Take a pay cut. Go get yourself. Like, bro, realistically, dude got outplayed by like Geno Smith this year. 
So so Patrick Mahomes is making a base salary of five point five million and a roster bonus of thirty four point four million. So he signed a five hundred and three. It was five hundred three, right? Five hundred three million yeah, over ten years. Crazy. So that's the difference. Is you're talking about longevity there. So so that's the reason why these big contracts don't end up totaling a, a lot of average. You're talking about longevity. So same thing with like Mike Trout. Same thing with Shohei Otani. Like, signed. That's when, insane. when they signed seven eight year deals. <laughs> Fernando Tatis, a 10-year, $400 million deal in baseball. Like The reason they they aren't averaging as much, even when they still are averaging high totals like ever in MLB, is simply that. They're going for tenure. Like, hey, I want to be guaranteed this much money. I want to be in the league for 10 years. I want to stay here. I want to play for you guys. Daniel Jones is looking for four to five years. What's he? he he's 26, give or take. Yeah, I think. I think so. Daniel Jones. He's 25. So he turn he turns 26 this May. On the 27th of May, he'll turn 26. So 4 years is 30. So now you're talking prime. Now you're talking prime. You're talking 30 to 36 prime time. So he's going to have a 4-year deal, try and prove himself over 4 years. If he gets cut, he's still guaranteed 85 million. What the fuck does he care? To to <laughs> roll into I mean. the next team or the next contract and be like, "Hey, I want four years. I want to average fifty million. Like that. That's what he's doing. But again, the Giants should have either franchise tagged or given him a one year forty, all guaranteed, and say, "Hey, here you go. Prove it. Prove you're fucking worth it. Throw fucking twenty five touchdowns. Score eight rushing touchdowns or five rushing touchdowns. Throw for three thousand yeah. yards. A two to one pick ratio. And sign Barkley yeah. to a long term deal." Yeah, that's fucking that but shit's crazy, it's man. It's the same it's the same thing with the Titans, like with Derrick Henry. They're trying to shop Derrick Henry because I mean, look at the league. You don't need a anybody in the league right now can run three yards straight line. And that's right. no that's no bash on Derrick Henry. He's one of my favorite players, one Henry's of my favorite running backs. What, like thirty one? He's gonna be thirty this year. This is his age thirty yeah. season. He's like, got three, I four years of being it, like, hey, yeah. this is probably his last year or two of being a 1,500-yard rushing running back. Like, uh, everyone that, that you see rushing nowadays are under the age of 28, 29, and they're fucking cooling. Like, they're, they're four or five rushes. They're speed. Like, look at Pacheco on the Chiefs. He just he was a fucking yeah, seventh-round nice. pick that they're barely Fuck paying. Him. You know what I mean? So yeah. the league doesn't need another like Derrick Henry. The the Titans were it was either last year or the year before had the highest fucking offensive payroll in all of the NFL. So we just shredded three veterans, including Taylor Lewan and Robert Woods, and now they're trying to shop Derrick Henry when they just got a brand new GM. But they're gonna keep Tannehill. The GM has openly said they're gonna keep Ryan Tannehill. Why? I, that's what I'm trying to say, man. Is no one's willing to pay like a, a running back long term anymore. Not not the amounts that they're looking for. But if I, if I'm the Giants GM, I'm signing Saquon to a three to five year deal, fourteen yeah. to sixteen million. Because maybe that that's what it was. Was he only wanted sixteen to eighteen million over two or three years? I don't know. And they only they were trying to offer him four or five at less, and he was like, ah, I don't want to be in the league that long, or. I don't know if I want to be here that long. You guys haven't taken care of me one time. Right. I just, I don't, I don't know. Like, you yeah. have the franchise tag, and I don't know what the NFL rules are on franchise tagging, what the limit is they can use it on yeah, each player how or either. however many times or whatever position or a certain player or whatever. But, like, in the MLB, you have to have seven years of MLB service time. Like, in, in Major League Baseball, not, not in the minors, you have to have seven years before you can enter free agency. Seven. That's crazy. So the, fir- the first six years of your fucking time in the Major League Baseball is wherever you were drafted. Is they're in control. They're in control of your wherever. contract. They can trade you. Their arbitration years. You have three, three to six years of arbitration. Like you're in no control of your own money. You have no say. You can say so. Arbitration is. Hey, I think I'm worth ten million. They think I'm worth eighteen million. And it's up to an arbitrator to decide, hey, well, based off your statistics, you're really worth fifteen five. You know, like so you get that right. instead of this, or you only get ten instead of the eighteen because you were asking too much. And 
Then there's fucking arbitration for people that are within the top fucking 20% of performers in the MLB that get the max fucking contract for arbitration. So it, I think people, the NFL, can take advantage of players a lot with the franchise tag. Again, I don't know what the rules are, but it's obviously not near as bad as baseball, in my opinion. But how are you going to franchise tag Saquon? Like, the guy that is, to me, this is to me, I'm not, I'm not a fucking Giants fan, is the face of your franchise. When you think New York Giants, who do you think of right now? Not Daniel Jones. Saquon. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. You don't think of fucking Sterling Shepard. Like, okay, maybe Kayvon Thibodeau, but, like, let's be real. Did you see you guys got rid of uh, Galladay? Thank God. You did see that? Yeah, for real. Yeah. He was robbing you guys. Like, and I just, I sit back and think, like, when you think about the Steelers right now, like, to me, you think of Kenny Pickett, you think of the quarterback, you think of Najee Harris, that, and I'm a Steelers fan, but I don't think of the receivers uh, on the current team, you know what I mean? Who, who do you think of when you think of the Steelers? Maybe TJ Watt? Minka TJ Fitzpatrick? Watt, probably. Yeah. So so that Weird to me enough, Minka was the first one that popped into my head. When when I think of the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, every time. And yeah. yep. every time. When I when I think of the 49ers, I, well, I think I mean, of fucking he's also George been Kittle. on the Packers for fucking yeah. damn near twenty years now. So so like take out time, just think of the first player you think of. Like when I think of the Lions, I think of Amon Ross St. Brown. That may not be their 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 guy or DeAndre Swift, Jared Goff. Right. When you think of fucking the Vikings, you think of Kirk Cousins. That's the guy no. that that's the first person that comes to my mind. Jefferson for me, and then Captain Kirk. Cousins for me. Just... But so so think think of that Fucked. like you think think about if Cousins was twenty six twenty seven, and they franchise tag him, but fucking. Signed Dalvin Cook to a to a five year deal. Everyone would be like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like that's the franchise player that you're not taking care yeah. of. Like that's the guy yeah. that's been through it all, injuries, the shit storm that was the Giants for the past five years. I guess they just the Giants don't want to play the QB game. You know what I mean? Maybe they're content with how Daniel Jones is playing and think that the running back position is more fucking replaceable. I mean, they have to think that with that type of money, like that's the only fucking thing I can think of. Is like forty million is too much for him, man. You know, now, yeah, when the franchise tag much, for a quarterback they're... is thirty-two, you gave him eight more with three more yeah. three more years and a guarantee guaranteed eighty-five. I don't get why you wouldn't, because for the past couple of years we've been saying like franchise you tag him, like you're done. Sign Saquon to a three to four year deal, and then sign fucking Jones next year. After he proves himself this year, because that's why everybody said, "Oh, it's a contract year; he's going to prove himself." I don't think. I did he lead the team to the playoffs? Sure, but let's be honest. Like let's let's talk about he, it a little bit. He was a very good game manager. He yeah. proved himself for a contract. Yeah, but he didn't prove himself for forty million. Yeah, not that much. But that's all I had to talk about tonight, guys. Unless you guys have something else I wanted to talk about. No, nah, that's... I think we're all set. All set. All right, well, everybody, I, I want to thank you guys for listening week in and week out, and I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the TKT Podcast. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as well as leave a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Later.